Ah, breathe that tin can air. Life support is my favorite part of every space game, and Space Engineers is not really any different. Uh, and I've been thinking a lot about life support. You shouldn't be wearing your spacesuit all the time. You can't really do science or program or even assemble complex objects while you have your spacesuit on because you've got big fat fingers and you can't move. And you can't even see very well. Taking off your helmet is nice, but you really need to be able to take off uh, the spacesuit. And I mean, our astronauts also do that. So I've been thinking a lot about the idea that coming down the line will eventually have some kind of spacesuitless situation. Uh, and maybe there will be huge advantages to that, maybe not, who knows. But either way, you need to be able to get around in safety without worrying about any uh, sudden suffocation. So that's easy enough if you're always on one ship. And it's easy, even easy enough if you've got like some small ships and a large ship because you can pressurize the bay and then it can work out. But when you've got two large ships, how can you transfer from one to the other without getting in a spacesuit? So right now I am in a freighter. This is a freighter with five heavy, five large cargo containers and some living space. It's larger than it needs to be, but it's not very big or very heavy. At the front, you can see I've got these two prongs. I've got a connector and I've got a merge block. You need the connector uh, because you need to be able to transfer goods across. And you need the merge block because the connector doesn't actually form an airtight seal. It's, uh, it's, it's actually not strong enough to come finish off that seal. So you need the merge block for that. You could use uh, like conveyors that directly butt up against each other once you're merged, but then when you unmerge, they don't separate. So you need to make sure that your point of contact between the two ships has no blocks that will actually finish merging. So of course we can go in and start to merge. Let's just line up our merge blocks here. And there we go, we merged. And you can see, I'm pointing like you can see it, and you can see that up, up at the top our connector also connected automatically. So what's our next step? Well, we need to deploy our bridge. So let's go ahead and open this up and find our bridge and deploy it. Now I'm using Glass Bridge, which is a mod, but it's the exact same size and function as a hangar door. Uh, the only reason I don't like the hangar doors is because they're a little bit annoying to walk across. So I don't have my helmet on. Let's go through. This is the invisible walkway, the invisible uh, airlock that I that I taught you how to build a couple days back. And here we are. Oh look, it's all pressurized. It's all pressurized. See, look at all this pressurization. So how does this work? Well, obviously, once it's merged together, all of these blocks count as being on the same vessel, and it turns out that all you need is a solid mass on all or four orthogonal directions. So these, whether you're talking about a, a glass bridge or a uh, or a hangar door, those blocks can extend and change the area that is currently covered, uh, and that is a great way to handle this. You don't need to worry about the diagonals, even though there is clearly a gap. They don't count as a gap, and it still counts as airtight. Now you could try and build this out of merge blocks, but merge blocks are not airtight. Neither are connectors. And the whole reason that they're suspended a block away with some airspace between us is because the merge block tends to cause a lot of damage, uh, so it's best to have it isolated. And that's why it has such a spidery look to it, this, this connector. You'll notice that I actually managed to damage the heavy block, the heavy armor block, just by connecting to it with this glass bridge. Uh, it, there's not really enough damage to worry about it, but it is interesting that even just the touch of a glass bridge can cause damage. And now I'm all the way across into the, uh, into the heavy uh, industrial base. Or they have the industrial ship. It's a mobile ship. That's how I do it. Now, what the heck? I'll go ahead and take you on a tour of this ship because, uh, I guess it's fun. It's always fun to see the creations that other people come up with, and I never get tired of watching other people's ships and people talking about them. Uh, so, okay, this is a heavy industrial vessel. It's got a lot of the things that you would need, like, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. Look at all this stuff. Stuff, 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 stuff. But this is built on a dime. It's not an expensive ship by any means. 
It's got one reactor, uh, and aside from a crap ton of silicon, it doesn't really have any expensive components in it. The most expensive thing in here is probably the gravity generator, which is hidden back here in the computer room. Now one of the things I use a lot is M Master's LCD mod, and this is definitely the best mod uh, in Space Engineers. And uh, yeah, go, go get it if you haven't played with it, because it lets you make those LCD screens actually display real data. In this case you can see that I've got two unpressurized air vents, they're from the other side, and a whole bunch of pressurized ones, and it also counts the number of oxygen bottles. But this can do a lot more than that. It keeps track of what I'm refining and what I'm building, uh, and it keeps track of my total stores of various kinds of things. And over here in the pilot's desk, I actually have it list all of our power. See? The ship itself is a fairly lightweight design. It's super, super narrow and super, super skinny. Uh, and it's just long enough that if a ship screws up and does something horrible to it, it doesn't have, it's going to have a lot of surviving pieces. So if someone crashes into these docking arms or screws up when they're landing on top of the docking platforms, or even in the back, screws up when it's trying to dock with a connector, all of that damage might depressurize the central chamber, but it's not going to damage the ship enough to actually cause it harm. The only way that that would actually happen is if someone directly hit the primary reactor, and even then, I have a number of batteries to try and help with that sort of situation. So this is a, I guess it's not really heavy, it's a medium grade industrial ship, and uh, this is the sort of ship that might actually be theoretically useful in survival. Um, but of course, in survival, these ships are incredibly annoying to build. Hmm. Well, Space Engineers isn't perfect, but its life support is now more interesting than ever. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, that's it. I'm still pretty burned out. Um, it's been a very rough couple of weeks at work. But you'll be happy to know that I seem to be getting back on top of the game at work, and hopefully that means I'll be getting back on top of the game when it comes to programming tutorials as well. Uh, I plan to go right back into the RPG stuff.